Hello, the world. Welcome back to another installment of Magic Monday here on the R&D. And this is going to be a little different than normal because, as you can see behind me, we've got Wolf. What's going on, guys? I'm here. Um, you probably know me from my Pokemon videos and other stuff on the channel. Um, me and Squirrels have been here since the start, the OGs, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, normally, I mean, you guys have seen my Magic videos. Um, if you're watching this one, I would assume. Um, the, today's not going to be me showing a trick, um, it's not going to be reviewing any gimmicks, it's not going to be a tutorial of how to do certain magic effects. No, today we're actually just kind of having a discussion and a description of an interesting trick that Wolf came across a few years back that um, blew his mind and he told it to me as soon as he, as soon as he uh, came to me after seeing the trick and it blew my mind and I just completely didn't understand how this could be done so we want to kind of throw this out there to the magic community watching and see if anyone else has any ideas or can point us in the right direction. So without delaying any further, I'll give it to Wolf to describe what he saw. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, once, once I knew that Squirrels wanted to do this magic um, kind of playlist or series here on the channel, I thought this would be the perfect thing to share um, because it really just is so mind-blowing. Um, I've seen a lot of tricks over the years. Um, I'm not necessarily like that involved with doing magic myself, but I've seen like a majority of Squirrels' awesome tricks and they all blow my mind. I've seen other tricks, you know, at college and just other places where they're doing magic. And I've had some pretty crazy tricks that I've seen, um, but nothing quite takes the cake like this trick I'm about to describe to you. Um, the people that were standing around who also saw this trick um, described it as satanic or demonic even, like they couldn't believe it was like almost seems impossible. And to us, it really does seem impossible that he was able to do this. Um, so really what happened was um, I was about in eighth grade, so it was a while ago, but um, I was at summer camp and we, we had been like, you know, at the lake or something and we walked back towards where we were all staying, where all the dorms were, it was different groups, um, we're all staying there together. And um, this kid was just doing card tricks for um, these people in a group. And we're walking by and all of a sudden we hear these like all these people just going crazy like what like wow like what's going on like, like they're bl blowing his mind so i was like man i really want to see what's going on so i walk up and um he starts doing this trick and this is how how he does it so he takes a, a volunteer and he says all right so we're going to do a card trick but we're not going to use any cards right now and they're like okay so let's just use our imagination instead so we're gonna shuffle this imaginary deck in, in our hands, okay? And so people start laughing, like, oh, it's an imaginary deck. He's like, you guys all see that I'm shuffling the deck? Like, you are like, yeah, we see you're shuffling air. You're not doing anything, really. And then he goes, all right, I shuffled it good enough here. Now you can shuffle it. He hands you air, essentially. You take the fake deck or the imaginary deck and you start shuffling it yourself. And so he says, all right, whenever you're ready, you can give it back to me. Um, so I give it back to him. And um, he says, now I want you to think of a card. He's like, I just want you to think of it. I don't want you to share it with anyone, your neighbor. Just say it out loud. I don't want you to do anything. I just want you to think of this card in your head. Just think of it and don't tell anyone and let me know when you're ready. So you, you sit there, you think of a card, and, and so you go, okay, I'm ready. He's like, all right, so now I'm going to pull out a real deck of cards in my, out of my pocket. I'm going to put this fake one or the imaginary one in my other pocket and I'm going to pull out a real deck. So he pulls out a real deck of cards and he says, all right, so now we're going to take this out. He starts shuffling it, he does a little bit, whatever, and he goes, all right, so that card you were thinking of, pulls the card out of it, this was your card. And without a doubt, without fail, that was your card. You didn't tell it to anyone, but somehow he was still able to know that that was your card, and you just sit there in awe, like, how does he know that? Um, and it was a trick, like, it wasn't like a kind of trick where, like, you do it one time, and then you don't show anyone else, like, because it would ruin the trick and people would know how it's done. No, he would do this for every single volunteer who wanted to be a part of this trick. And there were even points where, after watching other people do it, a kid would come up and he would say, this is your card, and the kid would look at him straight face and just be like, no, that's not my card. And he would, and so when that happened, he literally would just say, he would get all serious and he would just say, this is your card. And the kid at that point is just like blown away that he's able to even to know that. And so he just starts laughing. And he's like, yeah, you know, that's my card. And so this trick is just unbelievable. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. So uh, obviously at the beginning of this, if you're familiar with uh, very popular magic tricks, um, very popular magic card tricks, um, then it sounds very much similar to the invisible deck routine. But this is not the invisible deck because the invisible deck does require the spectator to state what their card is 
before you pull the deck out of the box, the, the real physical deck out of the box. Um, so without giving away too much more about how the routine is actually done, what the method is, it does require the spectator to say their card out loud um, before the, the magician does anything with the actual physical deck of cards. This, is, this um, also sounds a little similar to the invisible card um, routine, which the invisible card requires the folding of a card that looks like it wasn't a spectator's card, but then again, the spectator says what their card was, and then you unfold the card to reveal that the card in your hand was theirs. So in everything that I can find online, and in everything that's in my own repertoire of magic, and from books that I can find, none of them match his description exactly where the, the magician is so confident that he knows your card that you don't even have to say it until after he reveals the card to you. That's what's so mind-blowing about it. Um, and that's the thing that makes people think, like, he must have some serious, like, demonic skills or something crazy like that. Um, it just really seems impossible. Um, and I, I know I spent a lot of time, um, I spent probably at least three hours or more, and I, have, I told my mom about the trick, and she searched too. And we just spent all, all that time on Google looking, trying to find this trick. And as he was saying, like, we found a lot of the invisible card, the invisible deck tricks. But there's that big key where you have to say the card before they reveal it. And that, you know, kind of lets you know how the, the trick's more or less done. But the difference between this, the, these two tricks is that you don't have to, add, or you don't even have to say it, you just think it. And so we have, like, some ideas. I know Squirrels has been um, looking online as well. He's been unable to find anything about it as well. Not even just a mention of the trick, which yeah. is pretty crazy. Um, and I mean, I don't know what else to look up um, as far as descriptors are concerned, because all the descriptors that you type in for any kind of magic search is going to reveal is going to yield either the invisible card or the invisible deck, the standard routines that we all know. Um, I have posts on um, Magic Cafe, on Illusionist, on Theory Eleven, and on Dan and Dave, um, their magic forums as well. Um, so feel free if you're familiar with those or you have logins to, to go check those posts out um, We're just kind of wanting to know just point us in the right direction because this is boggling our minds so much and uh, and I just it's It's really perplexing So um, again, I don't want to reveal anything in like publicly to, to try to keep this discreet so um, if you're commenting below Please don't do any reveals in the comments below. If you have ideas, that's one thing. But if you know for sure, please don't reveal anything. Just kind of point us in the right direction or shoot us an email. Our emails are in our channel descriptions. Um, yeah. Um, and we were talking about, you know, just kind of like the best thing that we could offer as to maybe what it, it could potentially oh, yeah. involve. Um, and we, we talked maybe that it was more of like a mentalist kind of trick. And I think there's some real merit to that. Um, that's really the only way we can think of to explain it. Um, and we thought about maybe like he was using subconscious um, like things to try and like force our brains to pick a, the, the card that he wanted us to pick. Right. Um, and to explain how that can be done, even just el like simply, um, maybe he maybe like the number of times he shuffled the imaginary deck um, was the number on the card that you you were gonna pick, or maybe um, you know he said words that rhymed with spade or something. Or whatever to get you to try and to get you to try to subconsciously pick that card that he wanted you to pick, so then he would just pull it out and you'd be wowed. It could be something like that, but then we still don't even really know. It would have to yeah. be really complex. Well, like so, so with all of the magic that I've been into and the little bit of mentalism I've been into, I don't have enough mentalism knowledge to to understand where to look for a trick that would be that would suggest subliminally suggest the spectator to sp to pick a very specific card. Um, if that type of mentalism does really truly exist, then that's great. That's great. Um, I, yeah, that's great. Um, that's great, but I don't know where to, to even begin looking in those directions. Um, of, of course, the vast majority of mentalism has to do with mental suggestion um, or subliminal suggestion. There are multiple ways to force a card on someone with a physical deck that I know, but forcing a card on someone without any physical deck in front of them I just, I don't know how that would be done. Yeah, it, it blows my mind. And something, you know, that we also didn't mention, which is kind of interesting to think about as well, this kid was about my age at the time, so mm. he was only in eighth grade, possibly, you know, to sophomore high school range of, of, of you know, age. So for someone that young to be able to do a trick of this magnitude, it, it really is just mind-blowing on so many different levels. And uh, it's hard to know, um, you know, how he did it. And that's what we want to know is, is how... 
Um, I, I wish we could somehow get, get in contact with that guy, but there's no way of knowing. Yeah. I never yeah. even knew his name. It was just something where he was doing tricks. We walked up. He performed it for us, and it just blew our minds, and that was it. We walked away. But, yeah. I mean, it stuck with me so long, and just I still remember it vividly. I, I, I recount the story the same way I recounted it to Squirrels when it first happened. So, um, and that was before, like, I knew about the invisible deck, the invisible card. So I knew, like, that he didn't have us say the card before he revealed it. And that was, like, the biggest thing um, that sets it apart. Um, yeah, absolutely. So. And, I mean, as far as, I mean, as far as tricks go, then most, most of you that know how tricks are done, I mean, sometimes the, the simplest solution is the solution. Um, and it could very well be that. I just, I can't put my mind around something that, um, that produces the same results that Wolf is describing without it being some kind of complex method. Yeah. So, yeah. So with that, I mean, we just wanted to wrap it up. Um, it was really cool. Thank you for giving me the chance to be a part of um, this uh, series, Squirrels. And I'm, I'm excited to hear, you know, from you guys, for any hints you might be able to give us, um, or even if you're able to point us in the direction of the actual trick, it would all be appreciated, um, and I, we look forward to finding out. Maybe we'll post an update video if something happens, um, where we're able to learn more about the trick or whatever and figure out how it's even done. Um, but until then, you know. Yeah, until then, guys, as always, stay squirrely. And catch ya. And don't be a lone wolf. And don't be a lone wolf. Subscribe to the R&D for more videos like this and for magic, more Magic Mondays. See you guys next time.